schedule. Um, and I will ask her to introduce her organization, which I'm sure you'll all have heard of and perhaps have been part of, or maybe you are still part of. I'm with the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts. We have 10 million members in over 145 countries across the globe, aged from 6 to 106. That's wonderful. I remember being a girl guide myself, though now I'm near 106. <laughs> So, so many young women and so many girls, you know, that's a, a huge force, a huge energetic force in the world for good or ill, depending on what they know. So presumably you've been doing a lot of educating in some way, informing people about climate change so that they can make a positive difference. Can you tell us something about the kinds of things you've been doing and what the impacts have been? Certainly. I mean, I guess our story starts 100 years ago. We're up to our centenary this year. And from the very beginning, environment's been at the core for us, at the focus. It was all about getting girls at, into the outdoors, experiencing nature, understanding. And so we've always been doing it. And I guess we've adapted over, over time as to what the different environmental issues are. And, and our founder, a guy called Lord Robert Baden-Powell, had a message which was, leave the world a better place than you found it. So I guess that's what we've always worked on. And recently we've been taking a look and saying, okay, well, what does environment mean for the six-year-old, the 10-year-old, the 12-year-old today? And so about three or four years ago, we really took a focus on the Millennium Development Goals. So when the 185 world leaders got together in 2000 and said, we want to make a difference by 2015, we looked at that and said, well, if our 10 million members got on board, then we could be part of making that difference. And if you know the Millennium Development Goals, number seven's all about the environment. And so we have a, a slogan that says, uh, girls uh, can save our planet. You know, <laughs> Very good. Planet. And so in talking to the girls, we said, okay, we're gonna have a focus on environment. What is it that you want us to be really talking about? And in our recent online surveys and our discussions with girls, climate change is coming really, really strongly through. And whether it be a girl in Bolivia or Madagascar or Kenya or the United States or Australia, they're asking us to, to be involved in the climate change debate, which is, is different really in many ways because it's not always something we've done or been involved in. And we started going, OK, well, what does that mean? And the girls were saying they were scared. You know, they were worried. They were hearing all the negative, scary things about climate change. So we took that on board and said, well, we've always been part of the solution. That's our philosophy since day one is, if you see a problem, get in there and do it. So we've been looking at how we address climate change within our broader environmental program. So we're working at a global level in places like Copenhagen, and we're also working on the ground in the grassroots areas day in, day out, um, in the cities, the villages, the towns across the world. So it sounds very practical. Could you give me an example maybe of one uh, of a girl who has done something practical, who has herself moved internally as well as moving externally? In our family, there used to be a saying, you can't change the environment until you change the environment. So is there somebody you know you could talk about who, who made both those changes? Yes, we've got about 25 young women with us here this week in, in Copenhagen. So let me tell you about the story of, of one of our young delegates. Uh, Priska comes from Madagascar and if you know Madagascar it's a beautiful island off the east coast of Africa uh, and it's known as the pharmacy of the world I guess because it's of its biodiversity because of its beauty and Madagascar she was telling us has been really affected by climate change um, the droughts in the south are a whole lot worse and in fact they've turned to eating cactus because that's the only food source uh, to the north they're hit by cyclones with more frequency and, and that impacts the coastal communities and sea level rise of course is bad. So Priska wasn't a girl guide um, until about four years ago when one of her friends invited her to get involved uh, in a tree planting program, a forest regeneration program and so she thought what's all this about and at the age of sort of 20 or so got involved and, and realised that this really met with her passion. She really wanted to do something for her community, for her island. 
Prisca is now involved in running a whole range of activities with the 15,000 girl guides in Madagascar. 15,000? My goodness. So she was telling us yesterday this fantastic story where on their national independence day, it was a very important day, girls from, came from all over the country to march and march in protest about the environment and at the end to go and plant trees. So they came to the capital city, they gathered and they walked 35 kilometres in a day from the youngest all the way through and they walked to save the environment and she was telling us that they were in a procession in the capital as they were heading out to the country area and stopped near the presidential palace because there's a nice area to take a break and, and have some lunch and in rolled the presidential uh, uh, motorcade for the big lavish uh, Independence Day reception and she said here are they all there the girl guides 400 girl guides who'd come from all over the country there learning about the environment and all these people were off for this very lavish lunch and uh, they were waving and asking what was going on so and that's one very practical activity where she's led a bunch of young women to get on their feet and to march to to want to make a difference and to get to the end and then to uh, to do this forest regeneration project so that's just something really practical that someone can be motivated. Uh, and yeah, and it's obviously really meant something for her internally as well. Well, it seems like what you've been saying has been sparking interest because Adam here, who's sitting beside me, has been checking out what's been coming in. Hi, Lynn. Thanks, thanks for joining us. I've just been looking at uh, the Twitter feed, actually, and you'll be pleased to hear that there's a lot of talk about the, uh, the girls' uh, guides and, and the scouts that are here. And I, I clicked through to one of the links to, to a blog, which I think one of them is writing. And um, I've just read a quick sentence from it. She says, The WAGS delegation held a side event that was very successful. We wrote one voice on our foreheads to represent the one unified voice of girls and young women. And, and that got me thinking, that's a really interesting concept, that you've got girls coming from all around the world here. How much, uh, you know, how, how much of their, uh, their experiences kind of collate together? Um, and, and then from that, how much do, can you say that their, their kind of plans for action come together as well? Uh, really strongly, it's interesting. We, we only brought them together last Friday. You know, so 25 young women from all over the world. Some had never travelled before. They'd never left their countries. So you can imagine them arriving into to Denmark. You know, what's all this about? And the first morning of we met with them in the training, and they were not very confident. Uh, and each one of them had to do a project before they came as part of their preparation, and had to talk about it. So by the first night when we each presented to each other their projects, you could just see them going, have you done that? I've done that. Or I could do that in my country. And, and the bonds and the synergies uh, were just so strong because we're a values-based organisation. So our philosophy and our ethos is consistent all over the world. So they come together, they get that. And, and if you met them today, if you've seen them around today wearing these scarves, um, they're bonded and they feel empowered. They feel they can be here and make real changes. Great. Well, that's, that's a really interesting point that has come through one or two other speakers too, that you can make changes at one concrete level, but ultimately it's at the values level that something happens. So that's where we all join up. And then you all do your diverse things, but you're still doing the same thing at heart because that's where we are the same human beings. And, and the other thing you said that was so interesting for me was reminding me that, of course, you know, I was remembering back to my girl guiding days and the badges and the, my failure to light a fire and so on. But actually, I was outdoors. I forgot. That's such a, it was so obvious, like, oh, shit, what do you don't think about it? And usually I'm such an indoors person. And it was the one thing that got me outdoors. And that connection with the natural world, which so many of us now, young or old, have lost that sense of co connectedness between people but also within uh, us as part of the living world. You know, the fact that the Girl Guides are, from the start, as you said, doing that, that seems vital. And absolutely, and I guess so many kids today, well, in the developed world, spend a lot of time inside, uh, spend a lot of time on their computers or, or whatever, and a lot of them don't actually have time with their families doing outdoor activities. And I guess we find by bringing kids together, there's that sense of community and that sense of belonging and the sense of together, they can make something happen. And if they go out and experience that in the outdoors, in their, in their natural environment, and many of them don't get to spend a lot of time in their natural environment, 
I think they can just appreciate different things and learn and grow in, in different ways.